Good afternoon. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. I hope everyone had a, uh, a blessed and wonderful day, spending time, uh, some quality time, eating some good food and becoming one with the couch like I did uh, yesterday. Uh, but other than that, I hope that everyone's family has remained safe. And with that said, hey, I'm all ears. Fire away. Let's go first to Pete Sweeney. Go ahead, Pete. Hey, Coach, happy Thanksgiving back to you. Um, with Sammy coming back, I, I was just wondering if you could take the player and, and just describe what maybe makes him a, a perfect fit for that exposition for you guys. You know what, uh, what makes Sammy perfect is Sammy compliments everyone uh, as far as our receiver group goes. We got different body types. We got different guys that present different issues. He's a bigger body. Uh, the thing that he, he's smart, he's intelligent, he plays hard. Um, he's a great guy, he's a professional. So he brings a lot to the table. And the, and the beauty of it is Coach Greg Lewis does a heck of a job with that room, getting the very best out of him because regardless who's in there, the next man is responsible for playing whatever position that we assigned him to. And you ask, uh, what does he bring to the exposition? It's not so much that it's a particular position because in that room, we have a wide receiver group who's responsible for knowing all the positions. Let's go next to Adam Teicher. Go ahead, Adam. Hey, Eric, um, wanted to ask you about um, offensive play calling. How many play calls do you guys make in a game that are the, off based off the gut feel of Andy, of you, of any of the other guys, as opposed to maybe analytics or anything else uh, you, you guys might have? Well, I think more than anything, our play calling is basically a collaboration on what we study for the particular week. All right. On top of that, yes, we'll utilize our analytics. Mike Frazier does a heck of a job of updating us on things that, that are strengths and things that are weaknesses uh, that are being presented to us. Uh, but on top of that, making sure that we're on top of it may, uh, by collectively putting our guys in the right positions so they can go out and play. So is it a gut feel? Yes. On top of that, it's study, okay? and studying and preparing and making sure that collectively we're all on the same page as we come out of that meeting room, making sure we got the best guys in the right situations to go out and be productive to create the matchups that we want. Let's go next to Herbie Tiope. Go ahead, Herbie. Hey, Coach, uh, I want to ask you about your fellow Louisiana guy down there in Tampa Bay, uh, Devin White. Uh, when you pop on that film and, and you see the things that he's able to do at the linebacker position, what makes him so dangerous? Devin White is a football player. He can run. He can tackle. He can cover. He does all the things that you ask him to do. And on top of that, you can see and feel the passion that he brings to that team. Those guys do a hell of a job. And so watching him play, it's exciting, but also, too, it's a challenge because you know that he can cover – he can cover a back, he can cover a tight end. And on top of that, he loves to pressure the quarterback. So he's an all around football, football player. You know, our guys have turned on the tape. I told them, hey, before you even take a look at what's taking place in the back end, let's make sure we're focusing on this front seven because collectively, all right, this front seven is probably the most challenging one that we're gonna face to date. And we'll go last to Nick Jacobs, go ahead, Nick. Brad, I'll follow up with this. Uh, Eric, for you, what did you see from the offensive line against the Raiders? I saw a group that refused to be beaten. I saw a group that collectively stayed together. I saw a group that took a tremendous amount of pride in straining the finish. And I saw a group that every time we took the field, that they understood that each and every play was by far the most important play. Coach Heck does a heck of a job of, of teaching those guys. Obviously, um, He's gotten the best out of them, but collectively, I think the leadership has been outstanding with those guys. But on top of that, they know that each and every week, the majority and the bulk of that game is going to be placed on their shoulders. And they, in order for us to have the success that is needed, they have to make it happen up front consistently. And when you're going against a Todd Bulls type defense, what characteristics normally stick out against them? Well, first of all, the thing that stands out is that they play hard and they play fast. 
And one thing, <laughs> knowing Todd, you're going to see they're going to bring a collection of blitzes. Todd is very creative in what he does. I have the utmost respect for him. I had the utmost respect for him as a player. I've always had a great deal of respect for him as a coach. And he presents some issues. So it, it requires a lot of attention to be paid to, meaning our guys got to make sure that they're over communicating clarity. They also understand what they're looking at. And on top of that, collectively as a coaching staff, we got to make sure that we're presenting and giving them the what's and the why's and the how's on how we're going to handle certain issues that present. Coach EB, we appreciate the time today. Thanks for joining right. us. Thank you. You guys take care.